In this video, I'll show you how to use Python to create a RAG-enabled AI agent to remember everything you study. On the left, you will see the Gemini agent we will be building in this video. On the right is a simple program to chat with the same Gemini 1.5 Pro model powering the RAG agent. I gave the RAG agent my programming notes from this video and my last tutorial. Let's test if the RAG agent can remember everything I learned in those two videos, then compare which response is more helpful. The agent managed to give me a perfect response generating detailed setup instructions and flawless code. While raw dog Gemini, not being trained on my programming notes, hallucinated that me saying open AI text to speech meant Google text to speech. That's weird. That looks great, but what is the agent actually doing there? You may think that like ChatGPT, this program's just loading all of the text from both files and sending it as a single prompt. In reality, it's not very efficient to send these documents that are over 10,000 tokens each as one prompt. This program actually works by splitting the markdown files into chunks by the heading and the following text matching that heading. It then creates a vector representation of each text chunk. When I send a prompt to the agent, it creates a vector embedded representation of my prompt and then matches the context chunks most relevant to my prompt. Then the program adds only those text chunks as context in my prompt, making it a lot simpler for the language model to find the information that it needs. Unlike these YouTubers hyping up every new AI agent tool they haven't had the proper time to test, creating useless pet projects for the views, I'll give you a full understanding of how this AI agent works from the code level, allowing you to create AI agents that outperform any magic in the box AI solution like ChatGPT. If you like practical videos showing how to build your own AI tools worth actually using, beat the hype-fueled YouTube algorithm by subscribing to AI Austin and clicking the bell icon to get notified when I upload next. Before we get into the code, what the hell is a RAG agent? RAG stands for Retrieval Augmented Generation, which is the ability for a language model to retrieve data outside of its training data for context inside of our prompts. RAG can be implemented with various methods. Commercial language model tools like ChatGPT implement RAG by allowing you to upload a document that the AI tool uses the entire file content for context. Now we have vector embeddings to allow us to give our AI assistants far more text than can fit in a single prompt. Vector embeddings are numerical representations of a text chunk's meaning in a high dimensional vector space. A vector embedding model is ran on some text data we choose to give it access to. Then text chunks with similar meaning are mapped to nearby points in the vector space. Once a user sends a prompt, the AI agent converts that prompt into a vector representation and maps it with the vector embeddings. This allows for the agent to efficiently select the closest vector embeddings to our prompt in the vector space and reliably adds only the chunks of text relevant to our prompt. Now that we fully understand what RAG is and why not using vector embeddings makes our AI suck, let's get into coding our own AI agent to accomplish the specific task of reliably remembering everything we study. Inside of a new Python file, we need our program to load the markdown files content and split the text into chunks for the embedding model. This allows for more efficient and reliable embedding retrieval than randomly chopping text to the max limit of the model. We'll first import Python's built-in regex library for parsing text. Then we'll need to write this extract all headings function. The way this function's code works is it splits the markdown text into individual lines then iterates through each line checking for the presence of heading markers. If a heading is encountered, it creates a new text chunk. If the line is not a heading, it appends the line to the current chunk's content. If a code block is encountered, the function ignores the line starting with hashes and treats them as content instead of headings. Now we have a function to create our text chunks. We need a function to convert them into embedding vectors. For this tutorial, we'll use Google Google's embeddings model. There are dozens of embeddings models, including open source. So if you have another preference, feel free to implement that here for your agent. This function will take the title, which is a heading path in our text chunk, and the text as the corresponding content. It then returns embedding representations for that text chunk. Next, we need a function to find the embeddings most relevant to our prompts. This function will take prompt, data frame, and top in equaling three as input. Top in will specify the number of most relevant text chunks we want to include in our prompts. 
so feel free to play with this to see what works best for your agent. The function creates vector embeddings of our prompt, then in the variable dot products, we calculate the dot product between each context embedding and the prompt embedding. The dot product measures the similarity between two vectors where higher values indicate greater similarity. The top indices variable selects the three embeddings with the highest dot product. Then top passages creates a list of dictionaries with each containing the heading path as the key and the heading content as the value of the dictionary. The function then returns the top passages containing our three relevant text chunks formatted for our prompt. Now we need to consider the edge case where our agent gets a prompt that has no relevant embeddings. The find best passages function will still return the three most relevant passages even if they are not useful to the agent's response. Instead of just sending these in our prompt to the conversation with our agent, we are going to use this classification prompt to construct a prompt that validates whether the content will be useful to the response. This classification prompt will be ran outside of the conversation with our agent to avoid context bloat. That way we don't send any context to the agent that is not useful to the conversation. If the response from the classification prompt equals true, we need to construct a prompt with the embeddings. In this embedded prompt function, I will again format the embeddings into the prompt with a system message to Gemini on how to use my embeddings. Now we can connect our program to the Gemini API. You'll need to get your own API key at ai.google.dev and paste it inside the single quotes. Then create an empty list inside a variable called embed db. Inside the same folder as your Python file, create a folder called assistant underscore docs. Inside of the assistant docs folder is where you will want to put all of your markdown notes that you want your agent to remember. Then in our code, we will load the folder's full path inside a variable called docs.dir. We now need to run a loop in our program for every markdown file in the assistant docs. In this loop, we will load the markdown files text, then we will add the results from running the extract all headings functions to the embed DB. Once we have the list of text chunks in our embed DB, we need to convert the list of dictionaries into a data frame inside a variable called DF. On the next line, we will add a third column to the data frame to store the results from running the embed FN function on every row in the data frame. We can now set up our language model's configuration settings in a variable called generation config and turn off all Gemini safety filters in safety settings. Next, we'll configure our connection to the Gemini generative model API, specifying Gemini 1.5 Pro latest as our model, also passing generation config and safety settings. Inside a variable called combo, we will call Gemini's start chat function on our Gemini model. We can now start up a while true loop to create an infinite loop that requests a user's prompt, finds the best passages, then creates and runs the classify prompt. We can check the response from the classify prompt stored in embed or not. If it contains true, we'll construct an embedded prompt and print a message to our terminal, letting us know embedded content was added to our prompt. Now let's go back up to our functions and add this simple function to prompt our Gemini convo. We then return the convo last text that contains the response from our agent. If embed or not doesn't contain true, it will run this else statement which sends the prompt as is without embedding irrelevant context. Finally, we print the response from our agent to the terminal. Now your AI agent's code is complete and ready to remember everything you study. If you guys would like a copy of my source code for this video, it is available on my Discord in the Pro Channels. To get access to the Pro Channels, you can join the AI Austin Pro membership at the Buy Me A Coffee link in this video's description. By subscribing for an AI Austin and pro membership today, you will get direct access to chat with me in Discord and early access to all the pro tutorials before I release the videos. I'm also currently developing a Discord bot to run this AI agent with embeddings of all the pro tutorials. This will give you an AI assistant to help you through my videos that already has context of every step of the video. The last consideration for your AI agent is structuring your markdown notes correctly. If you use a note-taking app like Notion, you can simply use headings in your Notion doc to break up content content and export as a markdown document. If you are writing your markdown notes directly, the same tip of splitting your content by headings and basically just creating clean markdown files will be important for the best performance from your agent. Finally, the Gemini embeddings model has a 3072 token limit for each text chunk. Make sure all of your headings and corresponding content do not exceed the token limit of your embeddings model.